Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's clap our hands for praise and worship. got a friend who is not logged in online, who is not in church today, can you just text them to say, please log in, there is a special word for you. Just to text your friend and just tell them, please log in, there is a special word for you. Um, I just want to recognize our pastors in the house. Uh, Pastor Jay, we want to recognize you and love you. And uh, Pastor Vela, I can see she's so excited today. Baba is by the side. Let's clap our hands. Let's clap our hands. This is the beginning of uh, many days to come where we are going to be having him around. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. And I recognize our elders and our deacons in the house. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, I have an assignment that the Lord placed a word upon my spirit. Uh, I was trying by all means to find some other way, some other way of uh, going about it, but the Holy Spirit kept me pushing for me to speak on this message today. So I will ask everyone tonight or to, to this afternoon to, to be ready as I'm going to be sharing. And I believe that God is going to be also giving you an, in, uh, an inspiration for a revelation as I will be sharing. Because it's a very important subject that I, I have taught at another place and I saw a great change of lives after teaching that word. So today I'm going to be sharing on the issues of the bloodline. Issues of the bloodline. Uh, we are not going to be talking about the cases of the bloodline. Anything about cases. Yes, we can take our seats if you want to sit. If you want to remain standing, you can remain standing. Now, this other day, as we were just talking with my wife, uh, she just said to me, Ha! My father and I'm Dara Baba Susan, you now look like Baba, my, my, my father's young brother. She was just speaking, right? Because of the features that she was seeing on me, that I really look like my father's brother, his young brother. And as she said that, something struck in my spirit that um, issues of the bloodline are very important to recognize in life. In order to progress in life, you need to understand where you are coming from and where you are going. Um, I get reminded uh, when one of our evangelists was preaching at the Deeper Life evangelist Ruben Guti, as he was preaching, he said at one time he was called by the archbishop and he was pre prayed for and archbishop prayed a prayer and said to him, I'm emptying everything of the good family. And I'm dropping in the, 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 the blood of Jesus Christ in your body. I'm emptying everything of the good family. And I want the blood of Jesus to be inside you. Ladies and gentlemen, when we live... We live in this uh, physical life where we are very identical in the physical to our people. 
You can easily be identified. The day I saw Elder Sebastian, I really saw Pastor Piroro. Can you stand up, Elder? Those who know his father. Everything. Looking at him. He's just like his dad. You can't take away from him. Even if the father, you can sit down, Elder. Even if the father would have wanted to say he's not my child. The features on him speaks on their own. In real life that we live, we are so identical to our family where we come from. There is somewhere, somehow when you were born, they say, ah, this one is just like auntie so and so. This one is just like brother so and so. This one is like a babam. You are just a typology of where you are coming from. You are an identity of your birthright. These are things that you cannot deal away with them. Features of where you are born. Features of where you are coming from. There are physical features that I cannot change in my life because of the right of being born again. I can't change that. There is also spiritual features. Where we call character. Do you know there is something that happened in the Bible? Pastor Jay touched it last week when we were in BC. Adam, when he was asked by God, have you eaten the fruit that I forbade you to eat? Adam answered so arrogantly, and he said, the woman that you gave me. And God ended up chasing them out of the Garden of Eden. Can you realize that there are some characters that have got an effect? Not only for you, but for the whole family. When he was chased out of the Garden of Eden, his children now were offering Gifts unto the Lord. On the altar, Cain and Abel. And Cain kills Abel. God asks Abel, Cain, where is your brother? The same spirit that chased them out in the Garden of Eden. Cain says to God, am I my brother's keeper? Are you realizing something? The father started it and gave to the firstborn son. And it made the firstborn son to be chased from where he was again to go to another place in the east again, far away. Where he even says, where you are sending me, they might kill me. Because of the mark of spiritual characters. These are things that if you don't understand them, they can affect you. While you are, remember Cain was coming from worshiping God, from offering the offerings to the Lord. But God comes and asks where he's able. He says, am I my brother's keeper? Coming from the altar. Now, we see on the patriarchs, the Bible says, when Abraham got married, he married to his wife, Sarah. Genesis 12 says, Sarah was very beautiful. Or some versions say he was, she was fair. She was good looking, but barren. 
until a miracle of God came and she gave birth to a son, Isaac. Isaac is getting married from, to the same people. And the wife to Isaac, Rebecca, is very beautiful but barren. It's a trademark that is following. And Jacob and, and Isaac gave birth to Jacob. Jacob is getting married. He gets married to the, his most loved wife was beautiful and barren. When you are carrying all right, issues of the bloodline, we, we are, uh, here I'm giving an example of these issues of the bloodline on the wrong side. Issues of the bloodline, sometimes it's not about cases. Because a case is a pronunciation that has been done on your life by somebody or a group of people or something happens and someone says something negative to you and it can get, carry a bearing. That's a case. But issues are things that you are inheriting, are characters that you are inheriting. An issue is a situation, is something that happens unknowingly. It's something that you inherit, not knowing. You just take it. It's like an iniquity. Iniquities, iniquity are inherited. You, you pick them when you are being born. What, what sometimes happens is that um, when you, sometimes in your family, everything will be fine. Everything will be okay. But then you can start something yourself. Or your father may start something that is not there in the family. And he can just start it. And it becomes an iniquity that you inherit. And you, then you can pass it on to your children. So sometimes it comes in the middle of the road. It's not generational from far away. It can, you can even start from your own family. That is there. Uh, I will give you an example. When I, my brother was building a house in Marondera, he could not roof it when he got to roofing. Actually, I, even up to now, he's still struggling to roof that house. Now, when I was also building my house somewhere, I got stuck on roofing. And I realized that it's a spirit that is coming in, in the family, which we have to deal with. If I don't deal with this spirit, I can pass it on to my children. And my children will begin to also just pass it on and on. And there will just be houses with walls and no roof. Or it can manifest in another way, you can build a roof, but you don't live in. Because when a demon is manifesting, it will cause some things to happen. So in life, there are things that we inherit in our lives. There are also things that we start in our lives. Spiritual things. You, you hear the Bible saying in the book of, uh, is it First Timothy? Where Paul says to Timothy, the faith that was in your grandmother and it was in your mother, it, was, it is now, was teared up in you by the laying on of your hands. Uh -huh. Timothy inherited faith from the grandmother. And it was in his blood vessels. It was in his character. But he didn't show 
until something happened. Same applies even in the negative. You can inherit something and sometimes it doesn't show until something happens. Sometimes I call these kind of things demons, time sensitive spirits. They come when you want to do something extraordinary. When you want to pass the ceiling, you trigger factor them to then begin to want to show uh -uh, what you want to do. We are not supposed to go the way you are going. We have to remain where you are. Look at uh, David. Samuel chapter number 11. David is the king. <laughs> David was the king. Anointed the king. As he was executing his duties as a king. Because he, he, he didn't do the work that he was supposed to do. The Bible actually says on verse 1. During the times when the kings were supposed to go to war. David did not go to war. During the time when others were supposed to be in church. You didn't come to church. And you opened the door for that spirit to operate in you. David opened the door by not engaging in the work that he was supposed to do. He was supposed to be at the wall, at the forefront of the battle with his people. Instead, he remains behind. And the devil started preaching him. You can walk about. And he was walking. That same spirit from his forefathers. Remember, he is coming from the lineage of Judah. Where it was said, the scepter shall not leave. Eh? The scepter shall not leave in your house. So Jacob, David is inheriting the kingship. You can inherit good, but you'll be taking also every garbage. David is the king to be also ruling over the people. According to the prophecy and the blessing that was given to Judah. But Judah, remember when he raped Tamar, he said, anyone who is found to be guilty of your pregnancy must be killed. And when then he discovered that the pregnancy was his, he could not go back and kill himself. So the case or something, he inherited that system that when the trigger factor came, it affected him. As we worship God, there are some things that we have to understand that when they happen, and uh, I said you cannot do anything about the physical features of your genealogy or where you are coming from, but you can do something with the character and anything that is happening in your life. Because in life, there are characters that you will be told. You know, in my family, there is one of my father. He was, in my family, they can drink beer. You know, when we just say drink, you, they know how to drink beer. If, if you get drunk, <laughs> you remember that time, they said, ah, wanga wakuta kanya. If you get drunk and you, you even vomit and you do all the sorts of things, they will say, ah, mkanya wakuta so. To them, they don't mind about it. It's a character of the family that identifies us. I, I will tell you something very important. People always say, I want to, I'm praying that I break the chain. I break these things. I want to, to make sure that my family is not going to be involved 
in the things that I inherited. God can come and give favor in you. But there is danger. Children, watch this. There is danger of a child who, who misbehaves. Did you get this? You have prayed and received Jesus. You are trying to cut every connection. Evangelist Reuben has been emptied. So I'm emptying everything from the Guti family. But if his son does not follow the teachings of his father, he will fall in the same line of the Guti family. It will jump on you and get it to him because he is open-minded. He is free. He is a free agent who can capture that which is coming from the fathers. That's why right now I like Jesus because he has brought it for us to be one man for himself and God for us all. It's you who have to work out your salvation with the trembling and the fear. It's you who have to pray for your personal deliverance, whether you are young. That's why because of the Adamic nature, this Adamic sin that we are all carrying, no one is immune as long as soon as they are born. They are born in sin. That's why when you, are, you give birth to your child, they come here for dedication. So that as they are young, they are dedicated to the Lord. By then, the time they are knowing what they are doing, they have to repent, receive Jesus, get baptized the right way. Each man for himself. Because if they don't do that, it will come a time when the dedication anointing will be invalid now. Because you are now making your personal decisions. Job, Job was giving offerings for his children. He says maybe they might have sinned against God in their celebration. God forgive them. But one day was one day. They were not protected when the enemy came to attack. Because the door was open. Imagine if it, there was one of the children of Job who was God fearing like his father. Do you think he was going to die? He was going to be protected by God. Can I encourage the church here? That according to the word of God, there are characteristics that we have to work on. Where Paul says, work on your salvation with the trembling and the fear. There are things that you have to work out. Whenever you discover something that is not good in your life, something that is happening. You know, there are some characteristics that you inherit to say... <laughs> When I was casting out this other demon at another place, the husband wanted to speak and say, you demon, come out. And the demon says, you not ziva, you not ziva, you not ziva, you not ziva, in our family, we beat husbands. I can beat you now. A demon now promising to beat the husband. It was in here. And that means that spirit was also operating in here. When she would be doing certain things in the house, she would be misbehaving and speaking arrogantly to the husband. And the husband just thinks I'm talking to my wife. While the husband is talking to a demon, One of my niece, my, my sister's daughter, she was just speaking at home. And she said, 
when I when I get to church, I, I, I get possessed. I, 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 I misbehave and be like I'm possessed. And I start beating people in the church. And that's why I'm church in the no secret one name. Do tanga kurova van. Now, I said to her, when you are doing that, do you think it's normal? Oh yeah, let's talk about this. Someone is pretending, right? She says, I'm pretending to be possessed. And I start beating people. Is that normal? Is, is it normal? That's a demon we are talking about. Sometimes some demons will sit in your mind and you think it's you thinking while it's a demon that you are carrying. So there are issues of the bloodline that you can carry and they cause you to do certain things. You try this business, it's not working. You try this thing, it's not working. If you look, I've got my, my, fa my father's <laughs> brother. He has never worked. He's late now. He never worked. I remember one of his um, a cousin, brother, someone, uh, promised and said, I'll come and take you to Mvuma so that I give you a job to work in the mine. And he started thinking, I remember one day then he, he was drunk and he said, Ah, uko kumvuma, and in the You know what he was saying? He, he didn't want to work at all. Now that spirit, imagine it comes to you, you are trying to make a business. You just try to, to buy tomatoes and they will rot in the house without selling them. Because you are not feeling to work. And the people like that, they like eating <laughs> and drinking. We talk about talents here. Talents, talents, oh yeah, talent, oh yeah. Them will never wake those talents because talents are very spiritual. They will break that spirit. So it will not allow you to wake talents. It knows. It will come like now when we are working our home talents. It's normal that you can buy yourself a shirt. It's normal that you can buy yourself a car or something. But you don't want to do anything about God. We call for church talents. You go on hiding. Because when we are working talents, we are now home talents. We are now applying the anointing that we took when we were working church talents. We now apply them here on the home talents. If you are just working home talents now, where are you getting the anointing? Aona ushanda matari nda gorea pere. You didn't do anything. No saint in this, in this church. You are just coming and enjoying the church. You have no saint here. And now we, that's why you can, <laughs> Pastor Jay, pastors, you will struggle to try and help them. Do business, please do this. They are not understanding it because they are not coming from where they come from. They are supposed to come from. You talk about ends meeting, right? Ends are not meeting there. There is no connection. You can't connect from where you have not been. We can't just hear that you are now in America coming to Canada. Where are you coming from? Well, you are in Zimbabwe. Don't go to one to America. How did you come from Zimbabwe to that? You are now in America. Huh? It can't be. We have to hear that you have boarded in Zimbabwe. You are now in Dubai. 
You have now connected. You are now going to America. Not to just find yourself. You are already. Are you a magician? You need to understand the principles of God. You need to understand how things of God work. Now, there are these issues of the bloodline that comes in your life that you have to understand. Why is this happening to me? You must pray in order to have something starting so that even if you are a child of a pastor like my son, Oh, she had to go on a 21 days of prayer and fasting the other time when my son was in UK and he got captured by these demons and everything that he was doing I think she will testify one of the days everything that he was doing was going haywire nothing was getting successful until she went on a prayer 21 days and nights to pray for him to break that spirit and thank God, after breaking that spirit, it manifested there. A boy who was with them, who was a devil worshiper, who was doing things with them, started telling them, ah, I wanted to kill you, boy. Thank God for this woman, pointing at the picture of my wife. You must thank this woman. I don't like this woman. But if you are not careful, demons can attack you. It doesn't matter. And now when demons are attacking, this is where I want you to understand very careful. If demons are now attacking your child, they don't bring something new. They use that spirit from your generation, from where you are coming from. If the spirit has jumped you, it can't attack you. Then it will jump and get to your son, to your child, to your daughter. Because your daughter has opened the door. Then you will just be saying, ah, ah, quit as a mtambio. Ah, quit as a mtambio. He is now doing the mtambio things. Yeah, these are demons from the mtambio. Why? Because it's a demon that is coming to make sure that you don't do the right things. Now, some of these spirits, they come in your character. These demons of, of, of generation, they come in your car. Oh, oh. This is one other thing. I will talk about it when I'm talking about cases. People talk about Jezebel, right? They say you have got a demon of Jezebel. A demon of Jezebel did not die because it was not done the right way. When Elijah was told by God, to say, go and anoint Jehu as king and anoint uh, Ezeel as king over Syria and anoint Elisha as a prophet. He didn't do anoint the other two. He anointed only Elisha and he died. So the process did not go the way God had planned with Elijah. And the demon that was in Jezebel kept hunting because they had promised one another I am going to cut your head if I see you. Then we hear when, when, when John the Baptist who was carrying the anointing of Elijah, you hear even Jesus saying, Elijah had come and you didn't see it. John is carrying the anointing of Elijah. And Herodias is carrying the spirit of Jezebel. The daughter goes to Jezebel. What shall I do? My father has asked me. And Herodias with the Jezebel spirit says, I want the head of John in, in, my, in, the, in the platter. Because it was not dealt with from the beginning. If you don't deal with the spirit. If you don't deal with some of these demons, they will follow you and attack you right side and whatever. 
kupepetwa. You can't interpret kupepetwa right? We know it. <laughs> toast. It will toss you upside down. Now, so I want to encourage somebody. I will ask you these guys, Enoch, and your, your brothers there. How many friends of the pastors or pastors' children, the PKs, that you were playing with, who are not making it in life, and they are drunkards now? How many? Many. There are many. They were not them pastors. Because the, 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 the things of God is not about your father, your parents. It's about you. If we say Elder Enoch, we are not talking about these other three. God does one hell. If Enoch is a drunkard, we will not make him an elder. We will leave him to go and drink and dance in the pub. Because that's what he has chosen. What you choose is very important in the kingdom of God. What you choose to do will make you fall or rise up. It all comes to the mind. And the Bible says, First John, for that reason, the son of man manifested that he can destroy the works of the devil. There is an anointing of destroying the powers of darkness. Every lineage spirit, every spirit from your forefathers, every spirit that can want to stop you, you can stop it by the blood of Jesus Christ. You can stand and say, no, I'm not for this generation. My generation is a generation of success. There are so many things that are our, that I have found here. There are so many things that I found here. You know, cult, being a cult is not only on preachers. You can be a cult while you are there as a believer. That's what our father was saying. If you don't pray and fast, you become religious. Being religious, that's a cult. A cult is someone who just exonerate themselves. They are better than everyone. Have you ever seen preachers who, who feels like no any other preacher is better than them? You think it's the spirit of God? Why are you only the only pastor or the only man of God? To see Baba Guti is bad. So and so is bad. Ningi Ningi is bad. You are the only one. Elder so and so is not right. Elder so and so is not right. Deacon so and so is not right. Everyone is not right. It's only you. Ask yourself, am I not being a cult here? Amen. And in the end, you become occultic. So there are some special things. There are so many of them. Uh, I will touch on the physical symptoms. But sometimes you can tell the way you speak. Some people are even telling you, you are like Auntie So and so, one of the aunties who could not stay at her marriage because of talking too much. It's an issue that is following you. And sometimes it doesn't come on talking too much. You just find yourself confusion in the house there with your husband. Nothing is moving. Those are some of the signs that there is a spirit following you. The sexual immorality, emotional imbalance, slavery, speech perversion, physical disorder, and then some physical symptoms. You can give me some signs or guidelines, 
by which I may know whether my present sickness is caused by demons. Yes, which out, watch out for the following. The sickness has not been identified or had its cause been known after a long time. If you see a sickness just persisting, suspect a spirit following you. Horrible dreams, sleepless night. Man is created to sleep. If you are just finding yourself, you are not sleeping at all. Something is wrong. Demons are after you. Recklessness. You know, there are some people that are just reckless. <laughs> reckless. Uh, sometimes in talking, you are just reckless. You don't even guide, uh, guard your words. You just say anyhow. You just speak. They even give you a name. They say, well, what? Uh, whatever name they will give you about talking too much. Or even... Even in the meeting, some people will end up saying, ah, well, that's what he is. Just leave him. If you speak, they will all just be quiet because they know. But, ah, those are what? That's what they are like. Muttering. That's privately discontent. You, you, you are just, you, you, don't, you are not satisfied. Even if uh, anything, nothing satisfies you in this world. You are the only person who can satisfy yourself. Be careful of a spirit. Unnatural odor, unaccountable feeling out of the air, falling out of the air, hemorrhage, and you know, on hemorrhage, we talk about that woman who had the issue of blood. The Bible says she came to her senses. She realized that this is what is affecting me. It's not normal. It's a spirit that I have inherited. And this spirit can only be violated when I touch the hem of his garment. I will be saved. If I touch the hem of a priest, which he has got healing under his wings, according to the word of God. So she came to his senses and said, no, what is killing me? I have to go to Jesus. And the hemorrhage stopped right away. Why? Because she went to the right place. Amen. There are some times when you go to the wrong places for your healing. And they will be cutting you and doing all sorts of things. You will never be healed until you realize what is destroying you, what is affecting you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hearing voices from the spirit world. How many hear voices? They will be saying, I hear somebody talking to me. I can hear something speaking. Everyone else yeah, the is only not hearing one is hearing that. It's only you who is hearing that voice. It's not normal. It's a spirit. A natural feeling of heat. I'm, I'm sweating because I'm preaching. But when you just see yourself sweating and it's cold like this, it's a spirit. One day, um, when we were at a crusade in Western Australia, when we were at a crusade, a certain man came and he was sitting at the back there and he gave $20 to an elder to say, give that man who is preaching there. <laughs> and the elder just brought it right when I was preaching. There is that man who have said, I give you $20. And I said to him, let that man come with his $20 here. He couldn't come. I went there at the back to pray with him. As I was asking him to pray, that prayer of receiving Jesus, it took him years. He says, I've never done this. Why did they ask me to come in here? Demons had asked him to come in the church. And he wanted to defile me with $20 to buy the anointing with $20. And God helped me to cast it out. And as I was pray praying with him to receive Jesus, he started sweating. It was cold. Sometime in, I think it was sometime in November, December, 
it was cold. It was winter. And he was actually putting on a cardigan. But he started sweating. Sweating like what is happening on me. Demons can cause you to sweat. He was not jumping, jumping around. He was seated there. But he started sweating. Demons are there. They can affect people. They can cause people not to progress anything in life. Can I speak to you? Wherever you are in your family, in your house, you must ask yourself, am I doing the right thing here? I told you that in my family, where I come from, the first wife, uh, did I tell you this one? Where I was born, the first wife must go. Brother Martin. The first wife, whether she has got two, three, four, five, seventeen children, at some point she must go. And I am guarding against that even today. Because when things are happening, it will be no more. Why did she do this show she has to go? Because the devil created a situation to fulfill the obligation. Sometimes you can fight with your husband because of things that are already there in your family. Things that you have inherited and you are following them every day. And she would do something. And I say, Mama, you have to pack your bags and go. Why should I go? Where shall I go? Demons can cause a lot of this misunderstandings. One day, I, I, I was, uh, there's one of our child, she went for, is it seven, eight years? That one. One of our daughter, one of our children, we married them, and they went for eight, nine years, no child. Now, what happened is, the sister for her mom came from Zimbabwe. So the mother was now telling me, this is my sister. She, she struggled to get a child. She only got a child when she was, she was eight years in marriage. So the Holy Spirit said to me, ah, that's the spirit the daughter is suffering from. So we started casting out the spirit. Casting out the spirit. Two, three months down the line, she says, ah, pastor, they told me I'm three weeks pregnant. Right now they have a son. When you don't understand what you are fighting against, if you don't have a revelation to get to know some demons you fight, you keep fighting and fighting and fighting and thinking it's normal when it's spiritual. Issues of the bloodline can affect you to progress in your Christian life. You know, some of those issues are good <laughs> and you can even go with them you can even think that ah this is God doing this issues of the bloodline you need revelation that's why I was saying I was telling someone is it you my, my, my Jerry I was telling someone what, do you know in this church there are buses how many of you know about it? As you do your businesses, there are buses. Like what happened to our father in America. That while he was there, about to break even, so that he can come back and preach the gospel, a man said, appeared and said, I will give you buses. I will give you cars. I will build churches for you. But just work under me. Anything that you don't feel comfortable is not from God. I hope you get this. Anything that you don't feel comfortable doing it, you will just do it for the sake of friends. Because others are doing it. If you don't feel your spirit inside clicking with the spirit of God, something is happening. So many of you guys and me, we have fallen 
into the things of the devil, the traps of the devil, because of force to just, I will just do it. How many have lost their virginity by just saying, I will just do it? Because of friends. My friend have told me that she did it. I will also just do it. But your spirit is saying, no, wait for marriage. Wait for marriage. You just do it. You open the door. Can I encourage somebody? These issues of the bloodline, there are some businesses that can come as if it's very lucrative. It's going to help you. You need the anointing of God to help you. One of our businessmen came to me and said, Pastor, I've got a stand, very cheap stand. I can build 60, 60, 60 flats that I can build on that stand. Ah, this one is <coughs> it's a giveaway, Pastor. I, I said, no, 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 no. Go and pray for a week. Don't just quickly take it. Before the week, he came back and said, Pastor, you are a man of God. That stand, it was a condemned stand by the council. So this man wanted to throw the stand to me. So if he had bought the stand, saying, I want to do business. God has blessed me. I'm going to do business. If God had not intervened, he would have lost the money. Some things will come as if they are good. But the devil will be luring you so that you can, you can say, ah, God is not right. God is not good. Things are not working for me. Why? I bought this stand. Right now, he was going to be still struggling with that stand. But you have to hear from the Lord. You have to understand whatever you are doing, you must be a child of God. That's why Pastor Jay, when she was teaching here, she said, talent must be worked in prayer. Every business that you do without prayer, you do a lot of mistakes. Oh, I, I was telling somebody, do you know these businesses that we do? A lot of business people who are flourishing is because of what? A spirit behind. And in this country, in this Western world, ah, they will be telling you that we are selling some charms. I'm a witch. I remember on TV, on BBC, another time, I was listening on BBC something, Radio 5 something. And there was this girl who was saying, I fly with the reed and stuff like that. And people were calling, can you connect me so that you teach me how to fly? <laughs> oh yeah. You think... Africans, you are the ones who hide your things. Here, they make it public. Ask some of these children, they know. They will tell you. They have met those people who advertise themselves. And Am I lying? They, they meet those, those boys who advertise themselves. And you, do you know when they are taking you? They, they do Yerosadam tape, bit by bit. So by the time you are entering in there, you will not be able to come out. You wonder how a child got into that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my message I have today. Issues of the bloodline must be dealt with. I said the issues are different from cases. Issues is a system that is following your line, your bloodline. And it's all it's just doing it. You just do it anyhow. May God help us to break that. Like I have said, first John, the Bible says, for that reason, the Son of Man manifested so that he can break every yoke. He can break every case. Uh, Colossians, Colossians chapter 2. The Bible says he has erased every handwriting of the doctrines. Do you know there are doctrines, teachings, decrees that have been put in place? Oh, you are, you are, you are, you are a chairman, right? For ordinances. 
There are ordinances as well in the spiritual realm. Okay. Baba, when you are in a meeting, you sit down here, eh? you say we want chairman, a director for ordinances. There are also directors for ordinances in the dark world to make sure that the ordinances of the devil are coming to pass. As you sit there planning, the director of this, director of present worship, there is director of present worship in the spiritual realm of the devils where they will be planning to come and sing. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. You know, one thing that I like, our father says, we have discernment spirit. We must pray for discernment spirit. That whatever is happening at the church, is it godly or is it the devil? Sometimes we clap hands when the devil is saying, yeah, and that's never Yeah, I got them. I got them today. And they are clapping hands. When the devil knows that I have hooked you up, come on church, hear me at Mountain. You must be wise. You must understand the principles of the dark world. You must understand the war that you are fighting. You must understand the devil against you, the devil in your family, the devil on your children. There are some demons of the land. Uh, you know, I, I, I was saying, one time I, 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 I said, I'm going to pray and conduct exorcism, deliverance on Sunday. So I went up the mountain to pray. A lot happened in the mountain there. And as I was coming after defeating those devils, you know some of these demons that we cast here, I will have to fight them later, before. Before we come to church, we will have fought battles. Uh, so the Holy Spirit said to me, the demons you are going to be fighting tomorrow, you are young for the anointing there. You need a higher anointing. And I called the administrator. I said, can you pray? I'm going to be praying and casting demons tomorrow. And the Holy Spirit have told me for you to put your anointing upon me so that I will be able to deal with them. Brother, when I went to church, I was standing as demons were screaming. I was strong because I was carrying now the anointing from the national administrator. There are some demons that you want to fight against which are not your, your size. They are bigger than you. You need an anointing that is better than you. Even if you fast 24 days and nights, you may want not win those battles. You need God and an anointing that is higher. I, I was reading there. Baba Guti was talking about having the same spirit with your leader. If I have a wrong spirit with my senior at the top and my father, Baba Guti, and I have confusion, I come here and I will be just preaching my own things. That misconnection will cause discord and the church will not go anywhere. That's why I have to be connected with my senior. If I'm in, in, in what is it, Canada, I must be connected with another man with a higher authority. Amen. So that I will be able to deal with some of these demons here. I can't just come here and say, tonight is tonight. I need another anointing to be laid upon me and declare a decree that will make me to then come and stand. Ladies and gentlemen, some of the demons you are fighting against right now, they are too big for you. You just need, that's why I am here as a pastor. I'm not being proud, but it's the anointing. If the pastor is there, there is an elder 
that you have chosen to say we have an elder who is the chairing elder you remember when we say uh, you are the chairing elder for Edmonton you are the chairing elder for Alberta my hierarchy brother you will be getting the anointing how many have realized that the moment you relinquish the office the anointing goes while you were proud I'm the finance chair for, for Canada the moment they take away the finance office you can feel inside you in the pattern feel empty there is nothing now that's why I will never run away from a position in church. If they say, be an usher, I go. I, I, I want. Because there is an anointing that comes with the office. Those who refuse, there's a question. You refuse it to your own. Me, I will always say, I'm here in the name of Jesus. If they say, come and be some, I'm, uh, in the name of Jesus, I will be there. Because I know there is an anointing. And that anointing helped to protect me. I'm an international evangelist. When Baba is praying, it, it, when I was in Papua New Guinea, Baba prayed for me. He called when he was in, in Israel. And he said, I want you. I am going to pray for God to make you to go nations preaching the gospel. And I said, God, I don't want it just to be a prophecy. I want it to be fulfilled. I started praying for that to be fulfilled. Until they said, now you're an international evangelist. And I said, I'm ready. And I did the office call. Every time I go to Zimbabwe, I want to see him. Put your head in here. Anyone, if I don't see him, I can find Baba Joe, whoever. They, if I see Dr. Steve, put your hand. So that if I'm going, I'm carrying the anointing. Some of us, we run away from the anointing. And we think we can only do things on our own. In your own house, in your own locality. You can't. You need the anointing. To break every yoke of the enemy. To break everything that is following you. To break everything that is coming against your life. To break it in the name of Jesus. Can I encourage somebody? That break that spirit. Break that connection. Ay, 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 ay. Like a na Baba Susan, but not in a suite. <laughs> you are like Baba Susan, but not in Karen. Baba Susan is my, my, my father's brother that I was talking about. I may be looking like him facially, but my character must be different. My lifestyle must be different. I'm now born again. I'm a child of God. I'm under the anointing of God. You know, when we say you are like your father, we didn't say you have his anointing. <laughs> but you can take it and do more with the commitment that you give. You refuse to just be an ordinary believer. To my business, going to Rungo Punyunyuka out. Your little businesses which just break up. It's a spirit that is causing your business to just be going merry-go-round. You try this. You try. Some you see, if you see them coming and going, coming and going, like that man who said, Pastor, I always see. Don't go now watch I just see others crossing. While you are there, I told you about this girl. This girl. We prayed for her. When she was in Zimbabwe doing Form 6, we prayed for her. After she had been, we chased out a demon from her sister who was in Australia. And the demon went back home and hit her when she was at, uni, at, at, at school. And she came out of school. They told her to go back home because she was not able to walk. Wow. She was now walking in crutches. And the sister gave me the phone number. Phone a woman on my own. Can you call my mother's daughter? She's in trouble with demons. I called and prayed over the phone. I said, I have come again to you. 
I chased you here in Australia. I'm now coming there in Zimbabwe to chase you out. The following day, she went back to school. She was delivered. Today, she is setting up businesses because of the anointing of the God of Ezekiel. If you want to be successful in everything that you do, run away from the issues of the bloodline. Run away from the things that affect you in the family. Can I tell somebody right now, today you can say no. And finally, you know these issues of the bloodline, they are in character. In your character, what you do, how you do your things, how you walk, how you speak, it, 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 it's a spiritual thing that touches your soul, which has got the emotions and the will and cause you to do certain things in a certain way. And the purpose of those demons sometimes is to just accomplish your destiny, to make sure that if they are saying you will not win, to be successful in your business. Can you come here? I want to pray for you. you Done. Come. Oh, church, let's all just lift up our hands and pray. Let's all pray. Let's all pray. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Listen. I want us to pray. Everybody begin to pray now. Everyone, open up your mouth and pray. That the anointing of God can liberate you. The anointing of God can detach you from every spirit of generation. Every spirit that is making, slowing down your progress in life. Every spirit in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for a wonderful time in your presence. We pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for your spirit. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your spirit that breaks every yoke of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, as we go home, we are going, Father, with an anointing that breaks the yoke. We are going with an anointing of overcoming. Help us, oh God Almighty, that everything that you are going to be doing, these are your people, they are lifting up their hands unto you, that the anointing can flow in Jesus' mighty name. Bless them, Lord. 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 Bless them, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.